So this is the makeup of the cross slide. So we've got a bracket which is going to screw on the side here. We've got to obviously get that height right for that. And then the scale will sit on and screw to that bracket. And then the, uh, the cover will then screw over the top. So that's what we'll end up with. But the reason I got the slimline scale was I needed enough room to fit the scale, which is approximately around about there, but obviously to still have a cable um, to be, you know, to move in and out freely. But also my lock here to lock the um, cross slide off is right here. So with the slimline scale, I'm just about going to be able to get to that. What I will have to do is just put a half round in here and also just in this, the edge of this just to give me access because all, all it is is just an allen key what tightens onto the gib and then it locks it off so yeah so that was the you know sort of one of the reasons or a couple of the reasons why i went for the slimline scales anyway we'll um start to fix these off uh, machining wise um the scale is going to sit here but this fixing here is going to come straight through to where the top slide uh, where the uh, compound slide sits in and i've got no meat at all here to screw into so this hole I'm going to relocate over to here and um, use that as the fix and the back one's fine so anyway so we'll get that machine first and then we'll um, drill and tap those holes right so I've machined the slot to allow us to lock off the top slide there when we need to so I've had to sort of build this up with some parallels and some steel rules because um, the bracket is different to the height of the, uh, the scale cover. So once we get that on to sitting on those parallels, we've got enough room to now lock the top slide. And also we've got to be just below this surface because the compound swings around here and overhangs and we're just about under that level. So we can now take that off there um, I've also machined the new hole up here to screw further up. Um, yes, yeah, so we can take that off. We can then drill those holes and get them uh, tapped and then screw the, the bracket off. And then um, we can screw the uh, scale on. And then all we've got to do then is uh, locate our holes in the lower part of the um, saddle there and screw, uh, drill and tap those as well. But I'm going to do all that off camera. I mean, it's only really a, you know, a matter of just drilling holes and tapping them. And I'll bring you back when we're about to uh, assemble it all. So we've got all this now attached. So I don't know if you can see just behind here, there's a step. And um, so I had to make a block wider. I was just hoping to have a small block straight into the, into the um, saddle there, but you can see that step there and of course where these holes are comes halfway on that step so yeah so we've just blocked that out and we've got the new hole here for uh, fixing here like i was saying here wouldn't have been any good for a fixing because of where the top uh you know the compound slide comes in here so we've got fixing that side as well and then if i get down low enough you can just see where the lock is to uh, lock the carriage off or lock the uh, top slide off so yeah so what we'll do now is um, we'll put the scale together we'll get it all set up and then we'll have a test and see how we get on So I have had this scale on here um, before just to check the accuracy. So we run a dial indicator across the top and also along the side here. So everything was good there. So we'll just fix the reading head. Oh, typical, drop that one. Let's 
find out where our bolt holes are. And the same again, I, I tested this to uh, make sure that the um, reed head was in the right position, you know, and it wasn't dragging anywhere or catching, but that all worked out well. Put the cover on. And we've got that just below our surface what we needed so that was all good so yes yeah, so that's all now connected so i'm gonna have to route all these cables obviously somewhere i don't know what i'm gonna do with those yet but i just want them where they're gonna have as less strain as possible so we'll have a play with that but anyway as far as things go we're all set up and running so good so what we'll do now is um we'll Turn on the DRO itself and uh, we'll go and check the accuracy and see how we get on. So I've set up a dial indicator digital one on the Z Travel and uh, we'll set up the DRO and just make sure that the DRO is reading to the dial indicator's um, reading. So we'll just switch that on and it just goes through a startup process and we'll switch the dial indicator on and we'll load the dial indicator up a bit and zero and then we'll zero our DRO so I've been playing um, in the instruction book there's a obviously settings where you can change the resolution not the resolution the accuracy to the actual reading what our dial indicator is going to give so called linear compensation and I've been playing with that and I've got it more or less right, but I'll continue to just mess around with that. But if we just take a reading now, say any reading, 1.04 and on the DRO we've got 1.045. Obviously we've got an extra resolution on there to what we have on the dial indicator. So that's more or less spot on. Then we'll take a reading further along. So we've got 20.99 and we've got 20.995. So ideal, um, you know, perfect for my setup. And we'll come along right to the end of the dial indicators travel more or less. And we'll take that. Uh, we've got 47.57 and we've got 47.575. So yeah, so the table is now reading, or not the table, sorry, the Z-axis is now reading more or less true to the DRO. Uh, perfectly within the resolution what I need for the work, what I do on the lathe anyway. So that's the X1, uh, sorry that's the Z axis, so what we'll do now, we'll swap over and we'll do the top slide. So the top slide is called the X axis on the lathe, and I've now set the dial indicator up on there. Just put a mag base here just to, so we can load up the dial indicator. So what we'll do, we'll just get a reading, and we'll zero the dial indicator, and then we'll zero the DRO. And then we'll take a measurement, so anywhere to begin with. So we've got 0 0.74, and we've got 0 0.74 on the DRO. So if we now come along halfway on the dial indicator's travel, say, oh, say half, 22 dead, and we've got 22.01. And again, I can mess around with the linear compensation on here uh, still a bit more, just to get this, um, you know, down, you know, the accuracy a bit closer. So if we now come up to more or less the maximum travel again, and we'll just take a reading of, try and get on 50. So we've got it on 50 there, and we've got 50.005.
so again so ideal for my use um you know the tolerance there is perfectly okay for my you know what i make and what i do so anyway so that's now the dro all set up um there's a lot more options we've got on here when we come to machine and where we can set different um you know parameters and sort of various things but i'm not going to do this do that in this video so yeah so we can now carry on and start machining and instead of using the dials we can now use the dro so it's going to save time and um, be a lot faster to machine items so anyway so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and we'll see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching